So you're looking to get into the real estate business and maybe earn a little extra cash on the side, huh? Well, in this video, we're gonna talk about five side hustles that you can pursue in the real estate industry that can help you to build some more financial freedom and depend a little bit less on your day job. Stick around. Hey, I'm Seth Williams. I'm the founder of retipster.com where we give all kinds of insights and guidance for real estate investors. And in this video, we're gonna talk about a few different ways you can get involved in the real estate industry if you're just trying to earn a little extra side cash and get your foot in the door so that you can learn more about how this business works and eventually take this to a much higher level. So I remember back when I was working my first job out of college and I desperately wanted to get out of it. I wanted to get into the real estate business as an investor so I could start making a lot more money and really just doing life on my own terms and not living and dying by what my boss told me to do. And there was nothing wrong with my job. I just didn't like the idea that I had to do what they told me to do all day, every day, and I could never do my own thing. And so I got started the way most people do is I found a way that I could make money in the real estate business while I was still working my full-time job. And the good news is there's all kinds of ways that you can make money on the side. And one of the easiest ways I know of to get started is to become a notary. Becoming a notary is not expensive, it's not difficult, and essentially what a notary does, their job is to attest to the validity of signatures and the original documents that are being signed. So for a lot of years, I actually acted as a notary in my job, and I would sign hundreds of different loan documents for people who were borrowing money. And by acting as a notary and signing my signature right next to theirs, I was saying that I had actually looked at this person's personal identification. I verified that yes, they are who they say they are. So the document is not forged. It's not a fake signature. This is a real valid and legally enforceable document. And that's really what a notary does. And most notaries can earn anywhere from 75 to even a couple hundred dollars for every signing appointment that they book. So for every time they meet with somebody and notarize a signature. And notaries are needed anytime you're signing loan documents, anytime you're signing a deed. And the amount that you earn per job as a notary depends on where you're getting the job from and who you're working with. For instance, if you get plugged in with a local title company or attorney or escrow office, and you basically just act as a mobile notary for them where you're going out to meet people and sign their documents. It's typically gonna involve a little bit of travel time because you have to go to where this person is and watch them sign the document and verify that they are who they say they are. But aside from understanding how to do this properly, and just signing the document right after they do, that's really all there is to it. It's not hard or difficult work. You just have to go through the motions of becoming a notary, filling out all that basic paperwork, and then remaining in good standing in the state where you're authorized as a notary. So it's pretty straightforward, and this is not something where you're gonna get rich from it, but if you can constantly maintain appointments, say one a day or even a couple every single week, it can add up fairly quickly to a nice side income on a monthly basis. Another way to make a nice side income in the real estate business is to get into the business of bird dogging or some people even refer to it as wholesaling. And essentially what this is, is you're going out and you are finding great deals for other cash buyers. So for instance, let's say you're able to find a seller who is highly motivated, they're willing to sell fast for a very, very low price, but you don't necessarily have the cash to buy it yourself. And even if you did, you wouldn't have the resources to do all the flipping on your own. But if you have connections with one or more other real estate investors in the area who are actively looking for deals like this, you could bring the deal to them and earn a referral fee. And I think for the most part, if you have a good trusting relationship with somebody, it is possible to just have like a gentleman's agreement, handshake agreement where they would pay you for every deal that closes. But for most cases, when you're starting a new relationship with somebody that you haven't worked with before, you'll probably want to start by getting some paperwork involved, getting an actual purchase agreement signed with the seller and then assigning that agreement to that cash buyer. And then you would essentially get paid an assignment fee when that deal closes. I've actually got a very detailed blog post that explains all the mechanics and paperwork behind how this happens. I'm gonna link to that beneath this video, so feel free to check it out. I will say that uh, assigning purchase agreements like this is not illegal in all 50 states unless you are a licensed real estate agent. 
So keep that in mind. You don't want to just start doing this without first reviewing your state's laws just to make sure that you're actually able to do this without breaking the law. But if you are able to do it, and you still are able to do it in most states, this can be a great way to earn some side income in the real estate business. Along those same lines, let's say you actually do want to become a licensed real estate agent. If you want to be a realtor and list and sell properties in the local MLS and collect a commission every time one of these properties sells. There's a lot of real estate agents that work like this and in my conversations with some of the more serious agents out there they've told me that as few as about 20 percent of all the agents out there are actually doing this as a full-time career the rest of them are doing this more on a part-time basis where they're selling anywhere from like one to five deals per year so a lot of real estate agents out there totally treat this like a side hustle and just do deals when they have time on the nights and on the weekends and if you wanna do it like that, that's totally feasible. In order to become licensed as a real estate agent, you're gonna to have to go through some testing and exams in the state where you're working. And that's usually gonna involve a little bit of prep work ahead of time too, because you have to learn how to answer these questions right before you actually take the test. And of course, as you can imagine, there's costs associated with all this stuff too. So you should definitely be prepared to pay some of those costs before you even go down this road. And then there's also ongoing education and annual membership fees you'll have to pay as well so keep all that in mind you don't want to do this unless you're actually planning on selling some properties and bringing in some income to offset those costs another way to make some side income in the real estate business is to get into something called affiliate marketing now if you're in the online space if you have a blog or a youtube channel you're probably very familiar with this but if you don't know what affiliate marketing is essentially what's happening here is you are finding products and services from companies that you know and have experience with and are willing to put your reputation behind and you promote these services to your audience. So we're talking if you have a blog or any kind of a platform where people are regularly paying attention to what you put out there, you can say, hey, I've been using this. It's been working really well. If you wanna check it out through my affiliate link, I'll earn a small commission when you sign up. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Now, I will say, I think that there's a right way and a wrong way to do this. If you followed the RE Tipster blog for any length of time, you probably already know, I've done a lot of these affiliate promotions over the years, and I only do them on the companies that I really believe in and I'm willing to stand behind. Because you gotta remember, anything negative about the thing you promote is ultimately going to reflect negatively on you. So you only want to do this with things that you're very familiar with, and you're willing to stand behind. Now, promoting another company's stuff through affiliate links can be as simple as just posting your link on your social media platform so that all your friends and followers can see it and then you might get lucky. Perhaps somebody will click through your link and buy something. But in my experience, it's been a heck of a lot more effective to actually offer a ton of value before you even get into the point of posting your affiliate link. For example, I've done affiliate promotions for companies like Cozy and Ring Central and Bomb Bomb. And I can't tell you that any of these companies are perfect, but they're pretty darn good. And I believe in them a lot because I've used them for years. And when I went through the process of intentionally promoting these companies on the RE Tipster blog, I didn't promote it without offering a lot of free education and explanation as to how it works, why it's helpful, and how to really use it to make the most of your business and get a lot better at what you do. So whether one of these readers or viewers ends up buying anything or not, and I'll tell you, most of them don't, they're still gonna walk away with a lot of value in any event. Most of the affiliate promotions I've done in the past do not make a ton of money. I'd say an average one might make a few hundred dollars per month, but there have been some when I've been able to get the right product with the right audience and the right promotion where it's been able to earn upwards of a thousand dollars in one day so it can be pretty cool if you can get all the stars to align but again I wouldn't plan on getting rich from this it's just a nice side stream of income if you happen to have an audience and you know how to promote it in a way that actually adds value to people's lives and the last side hustle idea on this list is actually several things rolled up into one and it's all about being a freelancer so I want you to ask yourself is there anything that you're particularly good at that you can use to offer value to other people's businesses and lives. For example, do you know how to use Photoshop? Do you have a good speaking voice? Do you know how to write well? Because you could do things like graphic design, creating logos for other people, 
or you could do voiceover work for people's phone systems, or you could offer business writing services, anything like that where you know that there's a need out there and people need easy help, and you can basically just extend your services. And if you market yourself specifically as an expert in the real estate industry, you'll be miles ahead of all the other freelancers out there who are marketing their services to anybody and everybody. If you wanna give freelancing a shot and you think you have some value to offer the world, there's a couple websites you should definitely check out if you haven't already seen them. One of them is Upwork, the other one is Fiverr.com. And both these websites are kinda of different in what they do. Fiverr is more like low-end, ultra-cheap help. Upwork is more of the high-end, like ongoing business relationships but they can both be a great fit for both people who are looking to hire work and people who are looking to hire out their services. So definitely check out both of those. I've got a couple blog posts that explain very thoroughly how both websites work. Again, I'll link to those beneath this video too, but don't be afraid to put yourself out there. I think there could be all kinds of ways that you can monetize the things that you're already good at and really make a lot of money over the long haul if you're willing to plug away at it on the nights and on the weekends and when you have time to do it. So in my mind, side hustles are not just about making money on the side, but it's really about hope and thinking about the future. And if you're feeling like you're shackled to your day job or whatever source of income you currently have that you frankly don't enjoy that much, or say if you just don't have any income or not enough income at the moment, I want you to understand through this, like there are all kinds of ways you can make money and you don't have to be a slave to your job. Making money from a side hustle is not gonna be quick or easy in most cases, but if you pick one or two things where you wanna be an expert and add a lot of value to other people's businesses, and you commit to it for six to 12 months and keep plugging away, I think you'll be surprised to see these can be pretty impactful. And in a lot of ways, it'll even give you a lot of psychological freedom when you realize there's a lot more you can do and a lot more you can offer the world than just the income that your day job has to offer you, assuming you have a job at all. And also keep in mind, there's a lot more opportunities out there than just these ones I've mentioned here in this video. So keep your eyes peeled. Always be on the lookout for ways that you can add value to the world and make money on the side. So let me ask you, are you currently working on any kind of side hustle? If so, what is it and how's it working out for you? Feel free to leave a comment beneath this video and let us know. And who knows, maybe we can all learn of some other ways that we can make some income on the side in the real estate business. Thanks a lot for watching. For more information, be sure to check out the full blog post associated with this video. Again, I'll link to that and a lot of other things below. I hope you got some new ideas from this and I'll see you next time.